Let's start off in prayer. Our Holy Father, this is your day, and uh, it's a day that we can come together as your family, as brothers and sisters in Christ. And I will share the, the good news, and uh, Lord, I pray that you will be amongst us and be in and through us, that we may uh, hear the true message, uh, we may see what the message is about, that we may learn from the message, that we may take ownership of the message, and when we leave this building, we can apply the message through Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, we pray. Amen. Have you ever thought, why did Jesus call fishermen versus shepherds? In the Old Testament, God called shepherds. Jesus was the good shepherd. But Jesus didn't call shepherds. He called fishermen. So that's the take I'm going in this morning. I don't know if you've ever thought about it, but if you haven't, you have now. So, let's discuss shepherds or fishermen. As Pastor Ken just read, Jesus commissioned Peter to feed his sheep. Three times in John 5, or John 21, Jesus instructs Peter to feed my sheep. Take care of my sheep. Feed my sheep. It was to the shepherds on the hillside that the angels first appeared to announce the birth of Jesus. God handpicked David, the son of Jesse, a lowly shepherd boy to be the leader of his people. That's the kind of leader God wants. From reading the Bible, it's obvious that shepherds make great leaders. And we don't deny that. Shepherds are good leaders. During Jesus' ministry here on earth, Jesus was a shepherd. In John 10, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. And again, John, uh, Jesus says in verse 14 of John, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. So Jesus is not only a shepherd. Jesus is the shepherd. Jesus is the only shepherd. And the question, do we know our shepherd? Do we know our shepherd? Now, I've looked through various translations, the NIV, the King James, the NASB, and do you know what I can't find? I cannot find what Jesus calls himself the good fisherman. Have you ever seen Jesus say, I am the good fisherman. I am the great fisherman. The fish love me. You don't, you don't read that in the Bible. Because Jesus did say he is the good shepherd. So why didn't he choose shepherds as the future leaders of his church? Why did not Jesus call shepherds to be the future leaders of his church? Many of the great leaders of God's church and the Old Testament were shepherds. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses. They were all good shepherds. All of them were entrusted with leading the people of God before Jesus came. And again, as I go through the Old Testament, I can't find where there were good fishermen. How curious, then, for Jesus not to assign his New Testament church with shepherds. So the question you must, I'm sure you're asking yourself right now, I, I can hear you thinking, hey, that's a good question, Pastor Dwayne. Why didn't Jesus call shepherds versus, how come he called fishermen? I have the answer for you this morning since you asked that question. The first, I'm going to say possibility. I'm not saying this is in concrete, but the first possibility is church growth. Why did Jesus call fishermen versus shepherds? The first answer might be church growth. A shepherd is usually given an existing flock, and what does he do for the existing flock? He maintains that flock. A fisherman by nature 
must go out to catch new fish every day. You see the difference? Maintain, catch. Maintain, catch. God's church must grow and continue to grow. Fishermen could best perform that job description. Fishermen must work in all kinds of weather. The fisherman who aboards rainy days or stays at a home when the forecast is borderline will, will either be out of business soon or he'll be very, very hungry. This enterprising nature of the fisherman was needed to accelerate the growth of the Christian church. The second possible reason Jesus chose fishermen versus shepherds is involvement. Involvement. I think Jesus chose fishermen because God needs more fishermen and fewer shepherds. Think about this. Think about this. God needs more fishermen than he does shepherds. You've heard me say this. A shepherd does not produce sheep. A shepherd does not produce sheep. He maintains them. In a Christian church, every church member, so if I say every church member, that means all of you, including me, are or is a disciple, and we are called to be fishers of men. That's our calling, to be fishers of men. If you look into Matthew 4, it says, Now as Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers. Simon was called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus came up to them and said, Follow me. I will make you fishers of men. Now what's interesting, after you read that, they didn't come, with, come up with a lot of ex excuses. Uh, oh, Jesus, I'd love to, but there's a big fish out there I need to get yet before I do that. Or oh, Jesus, I've not reached my quota. Nope, can't do it yet. Jesus, I'm not qualified. They didn't come up with excuses on why they could not be fishers of men. Every believer should be a disciple and evangelist. When you're asked, what's your calling in the church? You should say, I'm a disciple and I'm also an evangelist. We are called to be fishers of men. A fisherman for unsaved men and women. Unsaved boys and girls. Jesus wants us to be involved. Now, not everyone can be a shepherd. But everybody can be a fisherman. We should never cease to be a fisherman for Jesus Christ. This is one of the main problems of the struggling church. Too many Christians are no longer fishers of men, but keepers of the aquarium. Think about this. Too many, key, too many Christians are no longer, no longer fishers of men, but the keepers of the aquarium. Our job is not to be aquarium keepers. But to go and fish for men, women, and children who do not know Jesus Christ. The Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren must never forget its mission. We must never forget our mission. Our mission is fishing for men, women, and children. It's not a special activity for special groups on a special day, on a special occasion. But being a fisher of men should be a normal activity for every Christian, every day, every hour. Now I don't mean to be a fisher of men, to be a fisher of men, you take your Bible and become a Bible thumper. You've heard the term, ah, he, she, they're nothing but a Bible thumper. No. Jesus doesn't want us to hit people on the head with the Bible. But Jesus does want us to share the word of God that's inside the Bible. And you can't share the word of God inside the Bible unless you read your Bible. 
So the question is, if I went to your home today, would I find dust on your Bible? Would I open your Bible and would your pages stick because they've never been opened? Some Bibles are read only on the outside. Catch that? Some Bibles are read only on the outside. Okay, got off tough. Let me get back on tarp. The third possibility. Outward fellowship versus keepers of the pen. Outward fellowship versus keeper of the pen. Shepherds often live in isolation. But fishermen are not one to stay in one spot. Now, those who are fishermen in here, I mean, I don't mean the people kind, although you should be a people kind. I'm talking about the fish kind. When you go fishing and you cast that bobber out into the lake and you don't get any nibbles, do you sit there all day drinking a nice tea, casting, casting, and just watching that bobber just kind of float? Or do you change places saying, this is a dead spot. I'm going to find me a good spot. That's what we have to do. If, you know, if we try to share the gospel with somebody and they just blow you off, you don't give up on them, but you pray for them and you go someplace else. Because if they don't want to hear what you have to say, if they want nothing to do with Jesus Christ, and you don't stop on them, you, you continue to lift them up and you go someplace else. You go someplace else. So when the, when the spot they are fishing is devoid of fish, they move on to another spot and cast out their line. They are social people and mingle with people. We are to be social and we are to be minglers. It takes a team of spirited, strong men to catch fish with large nets in the day of Jesus Christ. If he does not learn to work with others, he will likely be unsuccessful. It takes teamwork. The successful fisherman must deal with those around him. He must compete with many others on the lake. But he doesn't give up. In our case, we will be competing with who? In our case, who do we compete with? The world. Who are the fourth graders that will be coming to this church to learn about Jesus? Who's competing with us? It's the world. So thank the Lord Jesus that we get a chance to minister to them for an hour once a week. The fisherman is not a loner. Although, rumor has it, if you find a really good fishing spot, you don't tell nobody. It's kind of like mushroom hunters. If you find a really hot spot for mushrooms, I'm pretty sure... You don't put on Facebook, hey, at Mr. Becker's farm, the third field in the back next to the woods, you will find big mushrooms. No, we're pretty stingy with that. There's some things we don't share. But when it comes to fishers of men, we want to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. A church and Christian should never be a loner. A church and a Christian or a believer should never be a loner. They should never be on an island by themselves. Something... I never, again, I can't find this in the Bible, and maybe you can. And if you do, show me your translation. Jesus never asked us to live a life of solitude. What did Jesus tell us as a believer in him that you should be a solitude? Keep to yourself. Don't mingle with others. Don't share the good news. We are not called to be secluded from the world, but we are to go into the world. That's known as a great commission. Paul states in Romans 12, And when you go into the world, do not be conformed to this world. We are to go into the world and offer change to the world. And that's one of the problems the churches have nowadays. The world has gotten into the church and caused chaos. We are the change makers, not the world. Not the world. We are not to let the world come into the church and change us. The Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren need to go into the world. When you leave this building, and that's all this is, this is the building, you are the church. When we leave this building, we are entering the world. And what do we do when we go into the world? 
I guess a good way to share Christ is a good way we share a good restaurant. Because see, when we find a good restaurant, that, we don't keep that to ourselves, do you? Hey, I found a place that is cheap. Now, brethren like cheap. Okay. I found a place that is cheap and good. Brethren like good. You see, we are, we are, we are so easily to share our favorite restaurant. Go to Bean's Bakery if you want good donuts. Well, what do they have? They have well, I got something sweet. No. What's the most? Anyway, whatever I have is good stuff. The point is, you have no problem sharing. So why do Christians have such a problem sharing the news of Jesus Christ? Why do we have such a problem sharing our faith? I mean, there's, there's seminars, there's books, there's classes. How to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. How to do evangelism. Maybe the first thing we need to do when it comes to evangelism is get off our pew and get out into the world and share Jesus. Is that simple? Is that simple? So the Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren, we need to leave this building, go into our neighborhoods, go into our towns, go, go into our families, or even, for, or even churches, because you think about it, just because a person goes to church doesn't mean they're saved. Sometimes we forget that the mission field sometimes is right inside the building where we attend. Okay, let's look at Matthew 28. You all should know Matthew 28, the Great Commission. And here's what Jesus says. Jesus says, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you and to uh, commanded to. And lo, I am with you. I am with you always to the end of the age. So when we evangelize, when we share the good news of Jesus Christ, it's not just us. He's given us the help of the Holy Spirit to help us. Sometimes we need to step back out of the way and let God take over. So did you notice that Jesus goes with you? Jesus goes with you. You will not be alone. Fellowship with Jesus is 24-7. It's Jesus' way. It's the only way. When you evangelize, it's, just, it's not, not just you, but it's Jesus with you. That's why I'm not a fan. Have you seen a... Now, I'm, I'm going to say this is probably yes. Have you seen a bumper sticker where it says, God is my co-pilot? That is terrible theology. Athlete, terrible theology. You say, God is not my co-pilot. God is my pilot. I'm, in this, I'm, I'm over here helping him when I can. So we need, we need a new bumper sticker that says, God is my pilot, not co-pilot. Possibility number four, my last one. Possibility number four. Why did Jesus call shepherds, or why didn't Jesus call shepherds, and why did he call fishermen? Possibility number four. Because Jesus wants you to be a fisherman. A fisher of men, women, and children. No matter what your occupation is. You can be sitting at a desk. You can be driving a truck. You can be retired. You can be a farmer, a little farmer, or a big farmer. Makes no difference. Teaching. Being a parent, a grandparent, or whatever it is. One thing I'm learning in my old age, as a grandparent, you don't stop teaching Jesus with your grandkids. You don't stop. We are not called to sit idly and look pretty. Now, some of us can do that better than others, okay? We all can't sit idly and look pretty. But we all can sit idly. But that's not what Jesus wants us to do. We are called to roll up our sleeves, and even a short sleeve will be a little bit more. We are called to roll up our sleeves and be involved in outreach. We are called to be a go-getter for Jesus, to go forth into the neighborhood. To be a faith construction worker. We ought to be a faith construction worker. Building up the cause of Jesus Christ. We've got to be out doing something for Jesus. Not just being stuck in our own little cocoon or our arena or our home. We've got to be doing something for Jesus. 
Jesus wants you to lead somebody to Him. This year, this month, maybe today. But Jesus wants us to bring people to Him. The twelve disciples had to act quickly and with great zeal and determination. Our time is short. Our light is flickering. And the older I get, the more I realize my light is starting to flicker. My body say, oh, my mind says, go, go, go. And when I go, 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 my body says, you turkey, you shouldn't have gone. You shouldn't have gone. That's how I know I'm not quite where I used to be. My mind's still there. But my body is holding me back. It was a mind over matter. And matter's winning, I guess. Your ultimate task, our ultimate task, is not to warm the pews. Our job is to come to become fishers of men. Shepherds care for sheep, and that's good, because some of us will become shepherds. But fishermen are hunters. Fishermen go out and hunt for the fish. I mean, unlike sheep or sheep, the sheep you say, here sheepy, sheepy, sheepy. And my understanding is the sheep recognize your voice, they can bring to you. But fish are different. When's the last time you went out fishing saying, here, fishy, 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 fishy? And the fish says, hey, take me, take me. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work. At least the fish I go after don't work that way. If you got fish that do that, let me know. Let me know. I'm going to end up a little story. You know it's going to be on fishing because that's what today's about, fishing. One day a rich man went fishing. So this leaves me out. He had all the latest and the finest gear. He even had, remember I just said, he even had a fish collar. Who knew? But hours later, he caught nothing. Not even a nibble. So he gave up. He walked up the river and came upon a small board. Here we go, small boy. With a stick and a bent hook. That takes us back a few years, but that's how we used to fish. Well, not me, but me and my parents. The boy had a fine string of trout over his shoulder and he was about to go home. Okay, you know what's coming next. The man asked the question, How did you get so many fish and I got nothing and we both use the same bait? The lad said, here's the key. You've got to keep yourself out of sight. You got to keep yourself out of sight. And when we share the news of Jesus Christ, we got to step back and let Jesus take over. It's not about us sharing the good news. It's about Jesus sharing the good news through us. And we try to share the good news by ourselves on our own accord with our own authority. We're going to be like the rich man. We're not going to get nothing. To be a successful fisher of men, you have to love God, love people, and share Jesus. Again, to be a successful fisher of men, you've got to love God, you've got to love people, and you've got to share Jesus. We need to get Jesus into sight and get, G and get yourself out of sight. We have to get Jesus in sight and take ourselves out of sight. It's not about us. It's all about Jesus. Send the people away talking about Jesus. In a way, we need to emulate John the Baptist. Because what did John the Baptist say when he saw Jesus? He, Jesus, must increase and I must what? Decrease. Bingo! See how simple it is? Jesus must increase, we must decrease. This is a $40 sermon if I ever heard one today. What do we need to do? We need to be fishers of men. Let Jesus do the work. Let Jesus do the work. Acts 1.8 But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be my witnesses to Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest, the remotest part of the earth. Go, just go somewhere. 
A last question before I call a quiz this morning. Do you know the two greatest impediments of successful fishing is by Christians today? Now this is what I'm going to show you a picture. Just take a look at the picture and I'm going to be asking you a question. I'll start over here. And I'll show John if John can get this. Just, just look at this picture. Kind of both fishing. Take a, look, take a look at this. You only get a few seconds to look at it. Go over here. The guy's fishing. He's a fisher of fish. Or a fisher of men. You know this one. Over here. Got it? This one. Take a look at the picture. I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Okay. You all saw the picture. What's wrong with the picture? What's wrong with this picture? His line was still in the boat. Bingo! Did you see where the, the fisherman, where his line was? He was sitting in the boat. He was, and his hook and bobber was still in the boat. He wasn't fishing. He thought he was. He thought he was. And that's the problem with us today. We think we are fishing and we're not. We're not. That's one of the greatest impediments with us today is we think we're out there fishing for Jesus and we're not. We're not. Number two, impediment to, to, to sharing Jesus Christ is the poverty, is the poverty of our own personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We can't share who we don't know. We cannot share who we don't know. That's why we don't catch fish. That's why some people are terrible fishers of men. Because they don't know Jesus. They don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. So in closing, I'd say this. Get to know Jesus Christ. And the, again, I said I think last week, no is so critical. John 17, 3 and 2 Thessalonians 1, 8, 9. Look them up. No is a difference between eternal life of Jesus or eternal separation from God. And then once you get, once you know Jesus and you have a relationship with Jesus, then go and share others about Jesus. And when you do that, when you get to know who Jesus is, when you develop that relationship with Jesus, and then you go to share the news of Jesus Christ, then you will become what Jesus wants you to be. Fishers of men. Amen.